Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Edgecombe Art. Welcome to my Ever Messy Art and Design Studio. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm going to be showing you how to create a, a pattern a bit like the one that's on the screen in Critter instead of Inkscape. So we're going to be creating a seamless pattern, a repeating pattern, something that you can use for um, uploading to Redbubble for, you know, like the blankets and the sheets, or you can upload this to fabric printing sites uh, to print out fabric. And uh, I often do this over in Inkscape, which is probably my preferred way of doing this. But I wanted to show you how to do this over in Critter as well. The reason for that is it's got an amazing wraparound mo uh, wrap around mode, which means you can see your pattern as it's going in um, kind of a bit more in real time. Rather than over in Inkscape, you create your design and then you have to do the, you know, the translate and transform keys before you can see what it's going to look like actually as a repeat. Whereas here in Critter, you can see here, um, this is my, this is my square that I have created and you can see it straight away in wraparound mode, which is how it is going to look um, when it's repeated or tiled across a surface like a book cover or a blanket or shower curtains or fabric or whatever it is that you might want to do. Um, it's a little bit different because I'm importing images rather than drawing and drawing in Critter like this is easy. You can create fantastic little wee, you know, like um, abstract designs or, you know, like hand-drawn images and things uh, over here in Critter and it's great. But if you're not wanting to draw and you want to import your images and uh, use things like this, it's a little bit more tricky. So we're going to go through that today. Before I do though, um, if you're interested in any of these sorts of things, making a little bit of money on the side from sort of digital art designs or those sorts of things, uh, really help out my little wee channel if you hit the um, subscribe button or hit, give the video a little bit of a like, it really does help out, makes me feel good. Um, leave a comment and I'll um, say hello and I'll try and answer any questions. I have a huge list and I'm trying to get through a few things at the moment, but um, please by all means ask if there's anything that you would like me to cover. Alrighty, so here we are in Critter. So once you've downloaded your um, your program, you are going to want to file and start a new file. Now the important thing is here that you're creating a square file. Um, Critter will tile anything that's you know like a rectangular shape, but uh, most of the sites you're going to upload to are probably going to want a square file for this. Um, as you know, not Redbubble, you can upload anything, but fabric sites and things, they like it to be square. So we measure in pixels. Now this is a quite a big file size here, anywhere between sort of 1200 and um, 3600 or 4000 would probably be um, where you get a lot of the a lot of the designs and you definitely want it set at 300. I think the default when you start up might be like 100 and that's really not going to be a good enough quality. So that is PPI, so um, it's like, you know pixels per inch so it's how much information is jammed in so in this case there is 300 dots of information squished into the inch versus a lower resolution where there's only a hundred dots squished into that one inch so that just gives you an example of sort of how that works so we're going to create the um the new document now I have made this 3600 because the background um, artwork that I'm going to import is that size. And I would recommend that whatever seamless pattern you're going to use in the background, um, you pick the uh, same size canvas as that. So if you've downloaded a, hang on, let's just go and have a quick look. Um, <clears throat> uh, backgrounds, where are we in backgrounds? I really should have put these all into a, um, a little file here. So if you've downloaded a background here that is 4000 uh, pixels by 4000 pixels, I suggest you make your canvas that size. Um, in this particular case, mine is 3600. Um, a lot of them are a bit smaller than that though, and 1200 uh, pixels uh, would be a relatively sort of standard size as well. So it just so happens that these are all slightly bigger. So that's what I'm going to be going with. And from here, we want to um, you know, open up a, a file um, of where our, you know, our images are. I, I like to reduce it and have it on the side of the screen. It makes it a little bit easier for this next step. And all you're going to do is click on your image you want to drag in and drag it in onto the canvas. And you want to insert as a new layer. So we are going to do that and that's going to put that around in there. Otherwise you have to fuss about and, you know, drag and put it in all the right spots and it can create some pattern errors. So if you've made your 
page exactly the same size as your background you want to import then that's great if you don't want to import um, a, a seamless pattern background you could also here well, let's just um, and create a new one here <clears throat> create a paint layer to start with as well and you can infill your whole page um, with a color and that would work perfectly well as well so when you go into the wraparound mode you can't see any um, any errors or anything there I said it's turned it to blue but that's okay so we can just you could create just a plain background of just a single color and that would be a, um, a good way to start as well, particularly if you are having dramas with the next steps or you're getting errors or anything in your background. That is another option for you as well, just to choose a background color. Okay, so coming back to here now, I highly recommend you save your work. So let's just go save as. Now I'm putting this into my critter file. butterfly test too. Okay, um, in Krita you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of your um, out of your page. Now Krita is a little bit different from Inkscape because it's got drawing tools as well as vector tools um, and I, I do find the drawing tools are really good on here um, but I find blending and mixing with the vector tools. Maybe I'm just not quite as used to Krita as I am to Inkscape, but I find them a little bit more tricky. But it has an amazing wraparound tool, and you get to that if you go to image, oh, sorry, not, not image view, and wraparound mode, you can bring up what it looks like. And you can also check it easily if it is seamless or not. I have another video where you can export your files from Inkscape and check them in. Um, over in the Toils Tile Tester website. The other thing is you can import them into here and um, or open them in here and check to see if they are in fact seamless. And this is one way to check, which is really good. So we're just gonna turn off the wraparound mode for the moment. And I'm just going to bring in my screen. Now with the um, importing of images, you need to import e each image on a separate layer or as a separate layer for this to work. So we're going to open here and we're just going to pop back to um, where we have some images that we want to download and bring in and I am just going to use these black and white uh, butterflies now these are a seamless uh, background so these are PNG files if you were to choose a JPEG you'd end up with like sort of a white square around the butterfly and it wouldn't look right so make sure your files are um, transparent a PNG file and you just click and you're just going to drag it onto here and it's going to say insert as a new layer and your computer isn't going to crash like that there we go insert as a new layer and it's going to be way too big if um, your file is you know if it's a big file and there's these two buttons over here which is the transform um, and uh, the move and the move tool so we're just going to click on the um, transform button and you'll see the little square down here now if you just do it like that with the mouse it's going to um, change the shape so Control z if you hold the shift key down at the same time it's going to keep it in the same ratio same with most programs and that is something that you are going to um, want to do and i'm just going to pop that in the um, in the center of the design for uh, the moment and if you have a look image on their wraparound mode it will repeat over all the whole fabric but obviously that's not what we want so I'm just going to pop off the wraparound mode sometimes I find it gets a little bit clunky if you're working in wraparound mode with big files and things so if you've got a really high power computer that isn't uploading videos to YouTube and doing a thousand million ones in the background maybe you'll be able to work in wraparound mode with big files too or maybe I would rather um, so we're going to import a, another file now so just over into here just going to choose oh, that's right last time I put in that um, uh, this cat so let's pull him in as well insert as a new layer and I had him off the page a little bit here so if we go into the wraparound uh, wraparound mode it you can see Krita doesn't automatically put everything where it needs to be on the um, 
page. So if you click on the, the layer tool and click on it, double click on it, or shift click on it, sometimes I find works. Um, this is the part that I find quite frustrating about Quitter. When you go to um, see it in the seamless pattern, it doesn't always work and it drives me a little bit crazy and I have to sort of play around with the buttons and um, just trying to move them in and out with the right spot. Sometimes that's my computer catching up, sometimes um, that's Quitter being a bit twitty, I don't know, but I just find it a little bit challenging at times. All right, and I'm just going to pop back off the, the wraparound mode. I just like to know roughly where I'm placing them. Uh, and we are going to go into um, here and we're going to grab another, a different butterfly. So this is one that we haven't used. So drag it in, insert it as a new layer. You can um, label these as you go as well, change the layers and things down here because you can see they're coming in as different layers. Um, and that's that can be quite helpful to do as well. <clears throat> and just as you go along, um, get the wraparound mode. There we go. I don't know. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to catch up, or it doesn't register the first time. Yeah, it's been way. All right, so now we're going to get a um, another butterfly. Same process again. Just going to go down and um, select whichever one you want to pop in there. Let's just pop this one in for the moment. Insert as a new layer. There we go. Again, it pops in too big. This is just putting it in in the actual wraparound mo mode itself, um, which you can you can do. As I said, sometimes I just it, Clunks up on me a little bit there, so you can choose your placement that little bit, um, a little bit better. And I find a <clears throat> there we go to have a look at that. Okay, so you can zoom out from here, and you can see that we need to have. Um, something maybe in these spots or I could move move this butterfly up a touch or this butterfly up a touch as well let's just put in uh, like let's just put in another design all right so let's just choose this one here insert it as a new layer and I'm going to shift oh do you know what I haven't done and that's I haven't saved because it does as I said it can be a little bit a little bit clunky um, clunky at times and inclined to crash. There we go. Click on the layer. Where's it gone? There we go. Shift click and that's worked. Um, I think most of the time that's because Critter doesn't like it when you're clicking. Hang on, I'll just go into the wraparound mode. Um, if you're trying to click on the image in the wraparound mode that's not on your actual square so i was clicking on the image up um, that was here here i'll show you um just in the the wraparound mode i was trying to click on this bit of the image not the bit that is on the um on the actual tile so you have to push the shift key to make that work all right and we're just going to go ahead and um, pop in um, a couple of things into here If you want to you can just um, skip ahead. <laughs> I'm going to put this in a bit smaller. So here's our pattern. No, it's not absolutely fantastic, but it's just a way of showing you how you can um, do this. Now to edit any of the images, you need to be in the layer that you your, your image is on. So you can't just click and drag anything from anywhere. So if you have a look here, this is the little butterfly. And if you want to, you can um, rename this um, uh, the little butterfly, just so you've got a better idea. And then this one was the... Um, I'm just calling this, we'll call this moth. 
Okay, so anything you need to move around, you can move around. Personally, I think we need to um, move the move the cat over. Um, he's here, as you can see. We've already got him labeled as cat anyway. And we are going to move him around. Let's just zoom in here a little bit. I want him to be nudged over. So we've got our cat layer, our cat layer selected. Um, and we are just going to um, move him around. Now if we use this one here, um, he's gone onto the whole page by himself, so that's totally fine. And he's over there, so that's all good. Um, let's have a look. What else can we move so I can show you moving things that are around the let's move this butterfly here around a touch okay so we want to move um, this this butterfly see how we've got the cat selected so it's not touching our um, it's not touching that butterfly it's not that one it's this one here that we want to move so Alrighty, so um, when you want to go and move one of the images around in here, as you can see there's a couple of problems and you can end up sort of splitting it across and it create, can be a little bit challenging. So you want to make sure you've got your thing selected, um, your image selected, and then change to the, um, the move tool and then it should um, just uh, reposition itself relatively relatively easily um, in there if you are having problems um, sometimes you're just going to have to delete it and re-import it if you get it um, sort of split across two pages it can be um, uh, that little bit a uh, little bit challenging to get it uh, challenging to get it back um, without sort of figuring out how to reset all of that um, I find sometimes it's just easier to re-import it or um, obviously do this. I also find it handy to have my background layer locked so I can't accidentally sort of click and drag everything around and um, yeah generally that that generally that works for me. Like I said I just find the workflow a little bit more challenging here and I end up clicking on things that I don't mean to um, mean to work on in here. So I'm just going to pull in another another one of these. So insert as a new layer. There we go. I'm just going to um, make that a little bit smaller and drag that into um, into that spot there. And that should um, <clears throat> populate that into everywhere. And then I'm going to pop just another little wee one down here maybe a smaller moth maybe in front of the um in front of the cat so i'm just going to save this before it crushes on me again um this is what happened before there's a little bit of a disconnect with the video there that was the reason uh which one are we going to pull in let's pull in this little one here so we're just going to drag that in and we're going to insert it as a new layer um, make that a little bit smaller and move it down in front of the um, in front of the cat. Obviously, I could you know um, rotate these as well if I um, wanted to rotate those. Uh, you could hold down the shift key and just rotate that like that. Um, if you wanted to just to keep that in the right. Um, there we go, and that's just popped itself across all of. The, all of the pages. Now obviously with the cats being like just one cat it looks a little bit linear and it might have been um, a better maybe to pop another cat in somewhere if you were going to do that um, just so it's not quite sort of lines and grids with the cat but I guess that just shows you uh, the basic way you can do that and that's what it looks like zoomed out and um, zoomed in. Um, you can play around with those placements obviously or you could take the cat out and uh, put in another butterfly as well um, let's have a look or you could just turn off the um, the cat layer as well so that can be a helpful thing for you to have a look and see what you might want to do and in that case we could just drag in another um, another butterfly so let's just drag in this one here insert as a new layer 
um, again come up here and make it that little bit a uh, little bit smaller and then maybe uh, we will rotate that too just hold down the shift key and we'll just put it there um, like that and here Let's see are you going to appear yes it is there we go all right so now that is what our pattern looks like oh it looks like we've got one more little gap let's just put something in there just because we can um hang on i will show you um another thing we can do at the end so stay here for just another little minute let's have a look what else we're going to put in maybe another um another small butterfly so let's try this one in insert it as a new layer oh it's getting a bit busy make that a little bit small let's zoom this in we'll pop that in there and we also if we just hold down that shift button i would will rotate that one as well and where has it gone there we go shift click as well so now this is our new pattern as you can see we have our um, cat turned off because we decided we didn't like the cat now that cat's slightly transparent which is why um, you can see the butterflies and things through him so we're going to turn him off and we're just going to go with um, this design so here we have our seamless uh, pattern our seamless fabric um, etc for whatever it is we need and the actual image we need is this one here so this is our seamless pattern tile um, which we need to upload to a fabric site or um, upload to Redbubble for whatever reason you might like to do that. So we're just going to save this. Now we want to export this in the format uh, that, we, that we need. So we're going to go over to export. All right, and you're going to choose somewhere for that to go. Excuse me while I find somewhere for that to go. But what you need to change is you need to change it from a critter document to the uh, format that you need to upload wherever it is that you need to go. So um, some places that is a TIFF, some places that is a JPEG, and some places that is a PNG image. So I'm going to save that as a PNG image. Um, there's some other things in here. And we're going to save that and you can choose the um, uh, information here that you need so transparency make sure that is selected for most things and you can also embed like the different um, color um, color formats and things as well yeah, just ignore that all for the moment useful for printing and things like that but we're just going to do that and now that is um, now that is saved which is great and I'll quickly just show you how this is going to look up over on, say, Redbubble. I'm just going to show you how you would then uh, use that image that we have downloaded to, say, upload onto Redbubble. And I know that my background is a, um, uh, I'm allowed to use for um, print on demand. And these obviously full pod license. I always check to make sure that wherever I'm getting them from, I'm allowed to use them for print on demand. You don't want to upset anyone, um, it's copyright or anything like that. So let's just pop over to Redbubble and I'll quickly show you how to upload that over there. So here we are over in Redbubble itself and we're going to go to account and we're just going to add a new work. And just for the moment, we are going to upload a new work or should i copy it is it work that would be easier for me i know let's upload a new work navigate to where you have it saved so for me that was critter png saves in progress and there it is i will add that in Um, the reason why I was considering doing the um, copy existing work is because this is a seamless tile and I have all my like presets on a another one so I can just upload the image and it will just automatically tile over all of the items so um, that's pretty handy. And I must be uploading a lot in the background, this is taking forever. 
Now there's so many videos showing you how to upload to Redbubble itself and even I have done a couple as well so I'm not going to go through this in detail. Title, put some tags in, 15, use a, you know, whatever it is, I'm sure you can do that. Um, obviously it's going to look rubbish on a whole heap of stuff that is a single placement thing and I would um, uh, just turn all of them off. And um, for things like, I'm just going to turn them off too, I mean of course you could um, put this on here so if you wanted to do that I'll just show you how to do it choose the pattern uh, regular grid and scale it down to the um, size that you want it and um, apply changes obviously I didn't create this for like dresses and tops and things um, there's a lot of you know discussion that you should really put it up on everything but I don't always do that stickers and magnets to be fair that looks a little bit rubbish as well put it on the a-line dress if I wanted to but I just wanted to roughly show you um, you know, uh, you know, some things of how, how to actually upload. So apply changes and you just want to go through and make sure um, you choose your pattern, regular grid, scale the image, and you just go through all of your items that you have that you would like to um, put this up on. And that's exactly what you do. So edit, choose pattern, regular grid, um, change the scale to what you like, um, pillows, same thing here choose pattern regular grid um, change the scale um, you can move it around so you know like it looks it looks wherever you want it go um, I'm going to turn off for the moment prints and cards we don't need that but here we go so duvets and companies um, choose pattern regular grid um, can scale the image down a little bit if you like so that's what it will um, that's what it will look like. Um, same with the same with the mugs. I'm much. Oh yeah, we'll put it on the mug. Um, so just repeat the pattern. I just find putting the pattern on repeat is just a little bit safer um, because you know you're not going to have any errors. Like it will fit over the mug by itself, but it's just safer. I find to um, put the um, put the pattern on. Um, and then you know if you've not quite got it connected there's not going to be any gaps that are created um, created by you which is really important scarves again choose pattern regular grid etc alrighty and you're just going to go ahead um, and do that obviously um, on anything that you think is going to um, look that little bit better so hardcover journals um, go through all of those alrighty so just go through select what you want I will go back later and um, finish all of this off so I sort of got on socks and bags and leggings um, anything that has a seamless design it's not going to look so good on anything like the t-shirts where it's just going to be like a square block or on the caps um, if you wanted to create a matching set for this over in say like Inkscape you could maybe import one of the butterflies um, just to like make a matching matching set for your other options if you wanted to do that there we go so that's how you would upload that into Redbubble and going through here select whatever categories you'd like that to go into um, and um, is this mature content no it's definitely not mature content and let's just put that in blankets and pillows and optimize who can see it anyone um, I have the rights to sell that because I have checked to make sure they are print on demand licenses that I have for that and I am actually just going to put that as private for me now so I can um, edit that at a um, at, at a later date and then you just hit save work oh of course I haven't actually input a title let's quickly do that We'll just call it that for the moment and we'll just call it. it won't matter and I know I can come back and um, edit this after I have done the video if I choose to put this up which I might not <clears throat> and then you just hit save and hope that red bubble doesn't crash in the middle of this and lose all your work to do with all your placements and things like that there you go processing complete and that is what we um, that is what we want and there you get a, um, a image of what it's going to look like across items. Okay, so phone cases, the masks, the mats, um, 
and obviously there's a few things here that I haven't edited correctly and it won't look good so there's blankets and pillows you know I can see that looking all right on my pillows it looks terrible on the bag so I need to change the scale and I'd probably turn off the tote bag as well because I don't like that um, or scarf or the print tote bag it's not the most amazing design but you know it is just a example for you um, how to create a seamless pattern in Krita using the um, uh, importing images rather than over in Inkscape where we uh, I find that a little bit easier if you've got that drawing board over on Inkscape and you can you know like put all your images down and kind of import them and you're not dealing with the slightly slightly confusing workspace of Krita the benefit of working here of course is though you have um, you have the benefit of that which is amazing uh, you can also do some you know extra work over here on your layers and make sub layers and groupings and things like that um, the other good thing over here just the same as over on Inkscape you have the ability to turn on and off layers and whatever layers you have turned on and off over here in Krita is what will be exported as well um, the other thing you really probably should I should have done is uh, flattened the image so image um, layer and I should probably um, flatten that and that's going to lose my cat which is fine so there's hidden layers there that will be lost and that's okay right and then that just changes it all into um, one layer which makes it a little bit easier and there we have our design anyway so I hope that is um, interesting for you sorry it got a little bit messy in the middle there where my computer crashed and I had to re-import the butterfly I don't know if you've noticed that I probably have edited that out anyway thanks for watching and um, let me know if you have any questions <laughs> thanks guys see you later